Hello, Instagrammers. It's that time of day again. It's Justin Crodel here with Monta Watch, and it is our daily IG Live series. I did get a decent suggestion last night on what we should call this, and it was Montauk, which I thought was pretty clever. We may go with it, Monta Talk, Montauk. If you have a better idea, let me know, either in the comments or, um, or send us a DM or an email. It is 4 o'clock in St. Louis, and it is 5 o'clock on the East Coast in New York, which is where my guest uh, today joins us from. His name is John Keel, and he runs Watch Gauge, and he's involved with um, a couple other channels on Instagram. I'll let him elaborate on that, but John and I met a few years ago, I believe, at Wind Up New York, and um, we're, we're a little bit older than, than the typical segment in the watch community, so we hit it off uh, instantly, and uh, he's got a really great outlook on the business. He's doing some really cool stuff with Watch Gauge, and... Um, so he's going to join me here in a second, just waiting for him to uh, pop on. Let's see if he's on here yet. Uh, okay, don't see John just yet, but um, he'll be here shortly. I was just texting with him offline. Uh, he has a cocktail ready, so um, if you all are having a drink, it's Wednesday, I believe. I think so. So cheers to that. Um, not a whole lot else to report. Uh, just working from home, um, keeping everything going. The Watch Lounge says, is it paused for everyone else? I hope not. It's not paused for me. Uh, I can see your comments. Um, still waiting on John. Watch with us channel is here. Hello to those guys. And guys, if you have questions, fire away. We will definitely get to those throughout this segment. Um, John and I are going to talk about watches. He's got a few things he can share with us and then, um, and then we'll certainly get to your questions, um, as well. <laughs> I'm thinking John might have some technical difficulties here. We'll give him a few more minutes. A uh, quick wrist check for me today is the Sunburst Blue Ocean King. And, um, I'm probably a little seasonal when it comes to my watch wearing, Definitely more Ocean King in the warmer months and more Atlas Triumph in the colder months. There's John. All right, let me get you on here, buddy. John, if you, if you see a request, go ahead and hit that. It's not letting me... Uh, I think once I hit it too many times, it doesn't pop up. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Sorry, folks. Here we go. Request. There he is. Hey, made it work. <laughs> How are you, man? Good to see Good. you. Good. We're skipping a little bit there. I saw us having a little bit of trouble. Uh, I had to log out and log back in. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, I think Instagram is entirely overwhelmed with the amount of activity that's going on this week and last week, and it seems like this is becoming a, a regular occurrence for folks, which I think is wonderful. I think, uh, yeah. you know, the more the merrier. What the hell else are we going to do while we're stuck at home? I agree, and and the amount of people using Zoom and you know, hey, look, it's a virtual world, especially now we're all stuck at home. You know. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, so thanks for the invite, brother. Yeah, of course. And, and thanks again for being here. Um, I did a, a quick wrist check while I was waiting for you. I got the blue, Sunburst Blue Ocean King. What do you got on today? Um, I'm wearing also blue. Uh, this is a Watch Gauge exclusive NTH Nazario. Okay. Uh, happens to be my favorite NTH they ever made. And, uh, and I kill it with NTH. I do a lot of business with them. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so I dig it. I dig it. And that, that happens to be probably one of my favorite mantas ever, ever made. I the love Sunburst, that yeah. Yeah, that color's bananas. If if you like blue, this is the Manta to get. I'm, it is, and I'm, uh, you know, I'm a blue guy. Got watches, yeah, uh, yeah. But I'm I'm all about blue. Nice. Um, we actually had a couple conversations with Chris Vale in the past. It's been probably a year or more since I last spoke to him, but um, I remember him telling me that he does a fair amount of business with you. So that's great. Yeah, it's uh, we we've got something really well worked out. I mean, I'm I'm the exclusive sales channel for the united states for yeah. the most part and um yeah we kill it he makes a great watch um you know 40 millimeters by 11 and a half millimeters and 300 meter water assistance for yeah. an extremely fair price and great right. design great designs he's uh yeah 
Yeah, they by far my most successful brand here on WatchGauge. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, so tell us a little bit more about WatchGauge. What other brands do you handle? It's it's obviously online only through your site. It is. Um, you're basically a, a virtual retail location for several brands, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, kind of backtrack a little. I spent about 15 or 16 years in the high end side of the watch industry, the traditional side, and okay. always knew I wanted to be on my own. I always knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. And I left my job in 2016 to start a business that wasn't watch gauge. Mm -hmm. And when I did, I sold my entire collection of watches for the most part, with the exception of some sentimental pieces. Um, so I sold my Audemars Piguet, my Ulysse Narden, my, you know, Glasutas, you name it. I sold everything. That was my, my seed money and my living yeah. money. Yeah. But I still had the desire to buy watches. And not the bankroll to do it because I was using that money for other things. So yeah. I ended up stumbling upon micro brands and I ended up buying myself a few pieces from different brands. And even with my experience in the watch industry and, and handling and selling thousands of watches, I was kind of surprised that some of the, some of the watches I got that I bought were unbelievable for the money. They, they were yeah. really well designed, really well made. And I, I also was surprised at a couple of them that were real garbage and <laughs> my wheels started turning and yeah. I, I started to think, well, gee, if, if a guy with my experience and knowledge has the ability to pick a watch that's not that great or one that is great, you know, how is a pedestrian consumer to choose between which brands are good and bad? Yeah. So the idea of watch gauge started to, uh, to start to fester in my head and my thought was, if I can create an online community with a web presence in, on Instagram, on Facebook, on uh, YouTube, mm -hmm. and I can curate what I feel to be the better of the micro brands as, as you know, brands that I can sell on WatchGauge and give, give two things. Give the customers a good feeling that if they're buying a watch from me that it's really well worth the money they're spending, mm -hmm. but also for brands to come to me and – kind of share my following and my clientele base because if somebody comes and let's say it's to look for an NTH and they stumble upon a, a Boulder, you know, that's an additional sale for Boulder. So yeah. that's kind of where it all started. Uh, I launched the site on September 1st of 2017. So, uh, you know, I guess the September coming up will be three years. Mm -hmm. Thank God everything's rocking and rolling. And um, let's see, I carry at the moment, I've got NTH, I've got, Boulder, as I mentioned, um, I do, gee, I've got Draken, which I absolutely love. Michael makes a hell of a watch. Um, gee, I got so many, um, <laughs> Vortic, Vortic I, is, is a fun one, uh, because yeah. every Vortic is a one-off piece. We'll often swap our inventory, meaning he'll send me a few and I'll send them back and vice versa. Or sometimes we'll dual list things. So like he'll hold it in inventory, I'll list it, promote it, and whoever sells it, you know, and, and it's kind of a, a game trying to keep what's in inventory and what's not. There are yeah. times where Vortic isn't even showing on my site because he sold out of everything. Um, Ocean Crawler, I do really well with, um, he, you know, Christian makes a phenomenal watch. Um, you know, usually 200, no, I'm sorry, 2000 feet water resistance tested to like 20% deeper than that, you know? Yeah. So I basically, what I'll do is I'll, I, I seek out brands that I myself are in, am in love with. It's, it's super easy to sell something you really love and enjoy. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, no, I can relate. Um, so I, something I don't think I knew about you was you said the previous 13, 14, 15 years before that you were in higher end watches. Was that at a boutique or what capacity was that? So I actually, uh, I worked for a, I was a project manager for a software company out of, out of college. Uh, okay. and in 1999, I was working in the city in New York city and I was out on Long Island. I met a gentleman by the name of Stephen Butler and he was the president of Chrono Swiss USA. Okay. And he, so he basically imported Chronos Swiss into the States. We met at a uh, backyard barbecue. It was a big barbecue. It was like 80 people there. And I was wearing, I think, a tag lawyer that I bought myself. And we got to talking watches. And long story short, two or three months later, we were in contact. And he was looking for a good guy to represent the brand, to, to be, um, I guess, the sales manager for the brand. And um, I ended up starting with him in 2000, just 
end of 99, beginning of 2000, I started with Chrono Swiss, right. where I ended up being the sales manager for that brand for, uh, I think, about two and a half, almost three years. During that time period, I met my wife. We got serious. I knew I wanted to marry her, and I also knew I did not want to be on the road 50 weeks a year. Yeah. So I ended, I ended up moving in, uh, over to run a high-end retailer here on Long Island. So okay. we carried everything from Audemars, uh, Ulysse Nardin, uh, Glassuta, Tag Heuer. You know, I think we had about 28 brands at our height. Wow. So I ran that store for, uh, I think, about 16 years, 15 years. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so yeah, so it was, it was a great run. Yeah. I had tons of experience. I went to Basel every year. I went to SIHH and JCK. And we had an enormous amount of fun. But, yeah, so my yeah. my roots in the watch industry go back to 2000. Yeah, yeah, that, and that's that's pretty deep. And that's cool that you have that experience with those brands and that you can say, hey, I've, I've dealt with the highest of the high end. And sure. uh, for where WatchGate stands, you can say, you know, yeah, these products may not be exactly on par quality-wise, but – do you really need to pay this much more for that much more in quality, you know, in, in some aspects? No, I, um, I, completely, I completely agree. I mean, you know, I've sold watches. I mean, the most expensive watch I ever sold was $495,000. I mean, yeah. you know, we've sold some really cool stuff. What's really funny is a lot of, a lot of the guys that I sell to now are guys that have Patek Philippe's and, and APs and, and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And um, they just, love to buy a watch for seven or eight hundred bucks that they throw into their case and they've got you know a plethora of things to choose from right um, you know and then and then i get the corporate guy who says oh i want to buy 30 pieces to us to to give out as as christmas bonuses to my sales staff yeah that sort of thing so you know it's funny you get clients of all sorts and um and i've never been what i call a watch snob you know uh i've always loved watches that were fifty dollars up to fifty thousand i mean mm -hmm. I just enjoy the craft of it, the art of it. You know, um, you know, I've got a piece here on my desk that I think was a hundred bucks. It's one of my favorite watches, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, no, I, I get it. I totally get it. Yeah. Um, so what, what do you have uh, in front of you that you can share with us there? So I know you, you asked me to grab a couple of watches to tell a yeah. couple quick stories. Uh, yes. We'll start with that, that inexpensive one. Um, this is a system 51. Yep. This happens to be, um, so when I left, my job and started my business very shortly after Swatch announced the System 51. And kind of before I even bought any micro brands, um, my business partner in the, uh, the first business we started, he was in the city and the day that they released these guys. So he mm -hmm. took a picture of the four or five different versions they had. He said, which one do you like? I said, I don't know, I kind of like the red one. So he came back with this, and the two of us both have System 51s from, like, the very first day they ever sold. But it was kind of like a commemorative to, hey, we're starting our own business. You know, we're doing our own thing. Um, it's a cool piece. I still wear it occasionally. Um, yeah, so I dig this. Uh, yeah. Plastic, plastic automatic movement, which right. is just wild, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, and then the piece I brought here, I didn't, I didn't bring out anything that I sell other than what's on my wrist, except I have yeah. a Vortec. But I grabbed a couple of sentimental pieces. To me, to me, collecting watches and buying watches and owning watches and giving watches as gifts, you know, everyone invokes a feeling, right? Like it invokes a, a, a passion or a memory or something that's special. And um, this watch here is probably my most, one of two most sentimental watches. This this watch is a Breitling. It's about 34 millimeters. It's from 1946. And this watch, my grandfather, he purchased for himself the day he left the military. It was uh, the last thing he bought when he was leaving the PX. And the funny thing about it is my grandfather passed when I was very young. And I remember him just being a cool dude. He, he, he had a Karma Gia convertible. He always, you know, he always had a sidearm on. He was just like this <laughs> Wild West kind of guy. And years and years and years later, it was probably about six, seven years ago, my uncle called me up and said, hey, I found a bunch of uh, Pop's old watches, and I want you to have one. He said, I said, all right, what do you, what do you have? He goes, I'm going to give you the one I remember him wearing the most. And I said, well, what, what kind is it? He said, I don't know. It starts with a B. And I'm thinking to myself, it's a Bulova. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? We're, we, we live in New York. Bulova was here in Queens, you know, in New York. And everybody in the world had bullets from that time period. 
So when he brought it out to me and I looked at it, it was I was like, oh my god, it's a Breitling. So it's a it's a cool piece. It's super small. I've worn it maybe a dozen times. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest. This is the watch I've worn whenever I felt like that day I needed an angel on my shoulder. Yeah. For whatever reason, for for good or bad, whether I was going for a big business deal or whether if somebody needed some you know some big prayers. Yeah. This is kind of like, hey, hey, Grandpa, I need you. So uh, this is a very cool piece. Obviously not the original strap. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and is that well, one steel, John, that Breitling? Well, it's nickel plated something or other. Okay. Um, there's, there's a lot of pitting to it. There's some discoloration to it. Um, my watchmaker cert said, certainly I can take it all apart and clean it up and replate it and stuff. I said, absolutely not. Um, I didn't do anything to this other than literally had them drop a little bit of oil in the moving parts. Yeah. Uh, every scratch on here was, give, was, was made by my grandpa. Every mark, every line, the crystal is, is kind of beat up. Um, I'll tell you though, it's, I think the movement on this, and I may be mistaken, I believe it's a Venus 181. It's a north south chronograph. So it's got a, a register at 12 and six. Yeah. The smoothest chronograph buttons I've ever felt in my life ended yeah. up. And, and it runs perfectly. It runs perfectly. And they just, it's a column wheel chrono, which is really cool. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's neat. It's really neat. The, the pushers and the crown are really badly discolored. So okay. I'm thinking they were either some sort of other base model. Uh, base yeah. metal. I'm sorry, base metal. Yeah. 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 So okay. it's cool. Yeah. It's cool. What else? Um, so we'll, we'll go on. We'll keep going with strength mentality. Uh, okay. Big old Vortex. Right. So this is yep. what we talked about before. RT. RT is a very, very good friend of mine. Um, we talk very often, particularly about business and about being entrepreneurs. He's a couple of years ahead of me as far as time frame on when we started our business. Um, but we, we, we kind of think the same. We have a lot of the same goals and ideas and stuff. And we just jive real well. Yeah. And uh, and this was a watch that I got from him. Uh, this was a what was it, the commemorative Chicago Cubs World Series piece. Oh wow! Funny story is, and no offense to everybody, anybody, I hate baseball. I can't <laughs> okay. stand it. But the watch is super cool. Uh, old um, uh, baseball glove strap. Strap, yeah. The movement and and everything is all original and vintage from the turn of the century, I believe, nineteen oh nine ish. Okay. Uh, so super cool piece. And I'm just, I'm a big fan of what RT does. I think um, to me, it's really, really, really cool that yes. he's taking these pocket watch movements and dials and hands and giving them a new life. When I'm, when I was in retail, we did a lot of buying of old stuff, whether it be gold and jewelry and melting it down or old watches. And I can't tell you how many hundreds of pocket watches that we bought from clients for the value of the gold, mm -hmm. took the took everything out of them, literally threw the movement styles and hands away, and melted the gold. Yeah. And it, it kind of broke my heart all the time, you know? And I would take some of those old movements and I'd wind them, I'd play with them on a couple of occasions. I actually took them apart just because I had time on my hands and I really was just fascinated with it. And um, to see that Vortic is giving these pieces a brand new life is really pretty awesome yeah so so that's that's kind so of real quick respect. quick aside on that um is he still kind of waiting on that court decision on this or where where is that at right now i, so I was following along originally but we've been texting back and forth the last i heard was he had his big court day here in new york uh mm -hmm. on our on one of my on my other channel the watch with us channel we we yeah. did a couple videos on it um, from what I understand, they're waiting on decisions. And okay. um, I do know that, that, you know, we do plan on doing a follow-up with RT once a decision has been made. I mean, yeah. for those of you watching, you don't really know what's going on. Uh, Vortic is being sued by the Swatch Group and more specifically Hamilton for taking 100-year-old Hamilton dials, hands, and movements and putting them in a new case, which, you know, look. I love the Swatch Group. I love what they've done in the past. I love the brands they own. But in this case, in my opinion, they're super wrong. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, and plus they're trying to uh, they're trying to stamp out a small American business, and that kind of that kind of chafes me the wrong way. You know. Sure. 
certainly be one thing if they if he was knocking off their watches, but that's not yeah. the case. Right. You know, it's, uh, nobody's going to mistake a, a Vortec for an original, you know, trying to sell a, a brand new yeah. Hamilton, right? Yeah. So, uh, so you, you mentioned Watch With Us channel. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Fitting uh, fitting choice, right? Um, yeah, I was wondering if I was going to get some flack for that, but <laughs> just happens to do what I like. Yeah. What um, the Watch With Us channel, Who yeah. who's all involved in that? I know I've seen you guys at, at Wind Up. Yeah, the Watch With Us channel is, is, is a fun side project for a bunch of us. Um, you know, back about two years ago, I actually was part owner of one of the biggest um, YouTube channels in the industry. I ended up uh, last year, I ended up selling my stake in that. And um, I had a vision for that channel that, that the team wasn't really going with, which was fine. Mm -hmm. My vision was, you know, that channel had one host and one theme. And, and fantastic channel, fantastic host, fantastic content. My issue was he mostly covered stuff that was, let's say, between $200 and $500 in, in range for the most part. Mm -hmm. My thought was, you know, he the channel had hit a level of growth that kind of plateaued. And the discussion was always, well, how are you going to make it grow further? Mm -hmm. So I had this idea of getting different hosts, you know, five or six or ten different hosts, and um, each host had their own theme and their own content, right? So we would get one guy to cover maybe the ultra high-end stuff, another guy to cover micro brands, and another person to do, let's say, an interview series. Mm -hmm. And we just had all these ideas of if we had a bunch of different hosts on one channel covering every aspect of the watch industry from, from $50 Timexes all the way up to million dollar whatever they may be, and everything in between, and then you know, fun each series and whatever it may be. And, mm -hmm. you know, the group didn't want to go with that theory because they felt it was a far deviation from what the channel was. And I get that. And I'm, I'm actually happy that happened. So along with um, Ricardo Simi, um, Rob Velasquez, Spanish Rob, oh, okay. uh, Giancarlo Roselli, so GCR, I don't know if you know him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Brad Van Vaught, who's from, um, from um, the Budding Watch Enthusiast. And a few yeah. other guys, we kind of we kind of started the channel. My friend Anthony Kozlowski, um, didn't I didn't mean to leave him out. I was going to leave him for less. His channel is called his channel and his Instagram is called Watch With Me. Mm -hmm. We decided Watch With Us would be fitting because there's a group of us. Yeah. So we basically started a channel, an Instagram page and a YouTube channel where okay. we just put on every bit of content we can, and you know, it's a little less organized up till now. It's been a little less organized than I'd hoped it had been, but you know, everybody's got their own thing, whether it's their own YouTube channel, their own business. Some of these guys have full-time jobs. Some are in the watch industry, some are not. So for everybody to regularly post certain content has been a bit trying. We're yeah. working through those pains at the moment, but at the end of the day, I mean, we figured just to have a fun collaborative channel where we would cover anything watch related yeah. you know and um we've got some good good future plans we do a lot of giveaways so i'd say monthly we do a giveaway and it's usually at least one or two or three watches okay and that's kind of fun um i have a video i shot today with craig hester from uh i don't know if you're familiar with craig hester he's from mm -hmm. um uh vostok uh vostok europe and okay he's got another brand called Pranzius, which is really a pretty cool brand. And he's going to be giving away one of the, you know, serial number one of uh, one of the Pranzius pieces that are coming out. So we try to just bring everybody together. Um, yeah. Similar to what you're doing here, right? Like, because you're doing these live chats, you're bringing guys like me and other people in. And, yep. and it's just, you know, especially now, right now, I mean, it, but especially now, a rising tide will raise all ships, right? Mm -hmm. If everybody... My opinion is if everybody's got a, a good, honest way of doing business, a fun thing to do, mm -hmm. and just wants to be a part of something, that's that's really what the Watch With Us channel is. And, um, and yeah. so, far, so far, I'm pleased with everything, although things that, you know, me and the team agree we need to change work and not changing so we can grow further. Okay. Well, yeah, and so, uh, Ricardo's the one who I've met with you at Wind Up before. I couldn't think amazing. of his name. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah, – um, He's amazing. Yep. And uh, Brad – and Giancarlo are Monta owners, so I know I know yes. them. I've I've never met them, but I've, well, I Spanish Rob. I see him probably once a year when I'm in New York. 
Yeah. Um, so I've met him several times, but, yeah. um, but those other guys, um, uh, Brad in particular, I, I need to meet him at some point because we've had uh, a lot of, a lot of emails. Good, yeah. And, uh, I love what he's doing on his channel and I've, I've seen you guys doing chats on the, on the watch with us channel. So, so definitely keep that up. Cause that's, that's great stuff. People love it. Yeah. I appreciate it. I mean, a lot of yeah. it too, is just kind of like what you're, what we're doing here today. I mean, a lot of it yeah. is a lot of it, you know, some, a news story might drop, you know, like, uh, mm -hmm. for the sake of argument, like the day that we heard Basel was, was going to be canceled. You know, we all get on a group chat. All right. Who can get on a, on a, on a call tonight? So we'll get on yeah. and we'll just talk about it. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's, it's kind of funny because, you know, when I started in the industry, everything was magazine related, everything, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so you had watch time, you had IW, you had a you know, handful of, of key industry magazines and every, every month you'd get your issue and that's the way you got your news. Yeah. You know? Right. And then, the inter then the internet comes along and uh, you have time zone forum and all that stuff. So everybody followed the forums and, and watch mm -hmm. you want. And then, um, then naturally Facebook and, and blogs and, and all that sort of thing. I think, I think these video type of things, like the one you're, you guys are doing, is it's kind of the next phase. I mean, mm -hmm. whether whether it's to learn about news, learn about models, learn about anything, or just fun talks about watches, man. I think I think this is kind of the this yeah. is what's what's in now. This is the new thing. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And I've gotten a ton of positive feedback on this: DMs, emails, phone calls, texts, yeah. and the the biggest reoccurring theme is you need to keep doing this once everything goes back to normal. And so that's, that, that's a little, you know, kind of me coming out of my shell a bit because um, I've never really done this on a, well, now it's a daily basis, but, right. um, but yeah, I could see doing it once, once a month, maybe twice a month when, when this is done. I'll tell you what, I don't know what you have plans for it, but if you want to, you could certainly take these recordings. We'll, we'll download them and, and we'll upload them on the watch with us channel. If that's uh, something that interests you guys. I, I would love to do that. Unfortunately, um, I I probably need to research this more, but it it won't allow me to save it on my phone. I don't know if I'm out of space and the video is too big, but at the end of the recording, it says discard or you know save for 24 hours. Yeah, I think I think once you save it for 24 hours, you could probably go back in and, and somehow download it to like let's say a, a computer. Yeah. But regardless, either way, either way, yeah. I definitely love what you're doing. I think it's cool. Yeah. And and Thanks. hey, look, especially again in what everybody's going through, this is a great distraction, right? Yeah. Like any any kind of content at this point in what people enjoy, I don't care if you like cars or monster trucks or guns or flowers, whatever it may be, right. if you can absorb content that takes your mind off of all this craziness mm -hmm. and gives you a bit of joy, then, you know, good on you on that. I, I think God bless you for that. Yeah, no, totally cool. agree. Cool. Okay, so we, we, we got a little uh, off track there. What Anything else in front of you you want to show us? I do, I have two more. Uh, okay. This one, this one is again. I, I really only have one here of sentimental. This is a really cool story. So this is a Speedy um, from 2005. Okay. This um, is the Gemini Four to represent the first base walk of McDivitt and White um, with a sky blue dial and silver subs, and the mm -hmm. case back is painted with the space walk. I don't know if you can see that clearly. Yeah. Really cool about this piece. I had um. When I first started with Chrono Swiss, my first, my first maybe year in the business, I, I didn't know much about watches. But what I did know is I fell in love with the mechanics of watches. I mean, just the idea that you had springs and gears mm -hmm. that were running and operating, keeping incredible rates of time. I mean, if you really think about how many times a watch beats per minute, per hour, per day, and if it's off by five or seven seconds a day, I mean, this went like nine 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 point nine 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 percent accurate, right? Like this right. is stupid accurate machine. So I fell in love with it. About a half a year, a year into working with Chrono Swiss, I was doing a trunk show up in Connecticut a, uh, at a store called Lennox Jewelers. So I had my Chrono Swiss watches. It was holiday time, and right next to me was Omega. And the gentleman there representing Omega was a brand new salesman. And he had come from the world of uh, Lalique Crystal. And we spent, I think, a Friday night, all day Saturday, and a good part of Sunday next to each other, working, selling watches. I actually was, I guess, kind of part of my contagious passion with watches. I was actually helped selling Omegas when he had a client in front of Omega, talking about the movements and the gears and the, the calibers and all that stuff. And we ended up becoming good friends, and we stayed in very close contact for many years. 
And in about 2010, he and I were on a phone call. We spoke once every month or two. We're on a phone call, and he said, look, I'm leaving Omega. I was like, oh, what are you going to do? He's like, I'm not, not really sure. He's like, yeah. he, he, the guy had money, didn't need to work. Um, so he said, look, I've got this really cool Speedmaster coffee table book, and I'd love to send it yeah. to you as a thank you for everything. So he's like, what's your address? So I gave it to him. A couple of yeah. days later, I was, in, I was at work. My wife called. She said, you got a big box from, from Bruce. So I said, well, open it up. You know, I said, it's a book. She goes, no, it's bigger than a book. I said, open it up. So it turned out to be a monster coffee table book, this watch, uh, on the bracelet. I don't wear bracelet watches, so uh, the bracelet I have for this is in pretty brand new shape almost. Mm -hmm. um, so the watch, the book, and a, and a handwritten letter that would make you cry. Uh, wow. just, just about... The first day we met and our friendship sense and felt that by him leaving the company, he, he wanted to gift me something special. And um, like my grandfather's Breitling, uh, this, this Speedy is kind of one that I put on whenever I feel like I'm just, you know, whatever. I need, I need a little extra luck that day or, yeah. or today's going to be great. Today's going to be an awesome day. I'm throwing on my Speedy. Right. Um, and uh, I still keep in touch with Bruce. He's, he's doing really well. And, uh, and a watch I'll never let go of. Yeah, of course. One thing I find interesting about this, um, I, occasionally, for whatever reason, if I'm bouncing around online, I'll, I'll look at values of watches, what they're going for. And once yeah. in a great while, I'll look at this, right? For as long as I can remember, the watch is always selling online on eBay or anywhere else, Chrono 24 somewhere, you know, three, $3,500, $4,000. And for some reason, in the last two or three years, these damn things have gone up to anywhere from 9500 up to about 13000 Wow. And, uh, I'm blown away. But um, unless I need to put food on the table, yeah. I'm not telling you. you yeah, know? right, right. Yeah. Yeah, so, and then uh, the last one I broke out, this one, this one your partner, Michael, knows a whole lot about. Um, and I ah, think you, you I know what this is. Time. Yeah, so yeah. this is my, my Louis Monet. Um, you know, dollar-wise, by far the most expensive watch I own. Um, and it's also really special to me. I, I don't want to get too close up and show everybody the logos, but I had a client, uh, I have a client, he's, he's a fantastic guy, but he's the chairman of a major, major corporation. And we did 20 of these to commemorate something very special with the company. And uh, I had my hand in designing this. We did 20 pieces and he ended up gifting one to me and gifting one to my partner on the completion of the project. And uh, yeah. so this is a real cool piece. Yeah. But unfortunately, I'm not really supposed to be showing it on social media, so I'm not right. going to give you yeah, yeah. big quotes up of it. But what's what's funny is your partner, Michael, um, is, I mean, I, I guess a lot of your folks know that you guys are also Everest. And, yeah. uh, and as a gift to our client, when we were completing this, my partner and I figured, you know what, let's get, let's get a really well-made rubber strap to match the watch. Right. It turned out to be the biggest pain in the ass in the world. Yeah. And, and I mean, and, and you guys were fantastic. Michael was amazing. The, um, the truth of the matter is, is we needed a CAD file of the case of the watch and we kept getting the wrong one sent to us, which drove him bonkers. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, it, it, it was a home run. It really yeah. was a home run. So yeah. it's a, it's a cool piece. I actually usually keep it in a safe deposit box along with a few other things because, uh, it's yeah. just, you know, I don't know what they could be worth, but to me, they're priceless. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. As a matter of fact, this is uh, ah. this is the movement of that watch, and uh, I don't know if you can see that. This is the part of the dial. Okay. Yeah. I yeah, know. you're you're fully committed to that one. Yeah, this this is an old <laughs> you know an old uh, longa slash Blasuta movement. So okay. yeah, I'm, I'm committed to that piece again. I, unless, uh, unless I, I, I guess every, food. <laughs> yeah. Um, every time I see you, it's usually cold, and you've got long sleeves on. So I I've never seen those tattoos before that's impressive i gotta see that in person next time we're together yeah and uh and unfortunately i like watches they're kind of addicting so i uh i have to do my best not to just keep going <laughs> you know but i'm also the kind of person where i like i like to be able to wear a dress shirt you know even yeah. puff up the sleeve a little bit and right still look presentable because you never know in this world who uh who looks down on that kind of stuff you know but yeah yeah yeah, yeah so um cool man that's yeah some fun stuff that is, and thank you so much for sharing that. I'm, um, 
I'm not seeing any questions in the comments and I'm actually starting to wonder if maybe something with the audio is messed up for everyone else. Cause I see random Rob asked like, is it working question mark? And it, it seems like people keep coming in and out. So um, I can hear you just fine. Obviously you can hear me. That's weird. Yeah. But I can um, hear you. yeah. So the good news is the recording will be out there. So I say we, we cut it here and uh, we'll, see what's going on. Uh, see, watch with us channel says finally. Um, I don't know if that means Oh, somebody else says they can hear just fine. Um, All right. So maybe it's working. I don't know. Um, <laughs> we'll find out anything else. Yeah. Anything else you wanted to, uh, to talk about questions, something you wanted to share? No, I mean, look, it's, uh, you know, it's a crazy time in the world. I want to make sure that uh, with 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 everything that's going on that it said that obviously we're talking about watches we're talking about things that are not super duper important to everybody's livelihood or lives or health um but yeah. it's important to say that you know obviously we wish we wish everybody's getting through this thing the best way they can the healthiest they can and um you know for me it's about trying to give a little bit of regularity to people hopefully distract them a bit but also be very cognitive of the fact that this is a real 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 thing that we're all going through yeah, you know, and um, mm -hmm. but I love what you're doing and, and doing a daily uh, a daily video call. I think it's really kind of cool and important that, you know, you, you're offering that distraction. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, I think as long as people still don't mind seeing my mug on here and, and actually give a crap about what we're talking about, then then, yeah, we'll we'll certainly keep doing it. Yeah, um, you're, you're not one of those guys who has a face for radio. So that's good. You're, you're good that. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I've been really fortunate to to make a lot of good connections in the industry, yourself included. And um, I've basically been just reaching out to everyone and saying, hey, here's what I'm doing. Uh, do you want to come on and do it with me? And um, it honestly hasn't been that hard to keep lining them up. So that's what I've been doing. I've got pretty much one every day through Monday of next week. And awesome. uh, I'm probably going to kind of slow it down just a touch because eventually I'm not going to be able to keep doing it every day. It's going to be, you know, there will be anybody else to talk to. Right. Um, but I've had, um, you know, I've had some fellow brand owners, I've had customers, I've had, you know, folks like you, I've had, uh, uh Matt Scannell from Vertical Horizon on the other night. So yeah, I saw that. that, that one was incredible. That's and, cool. um, and I'm going to keep reach out to pe uh, reaching out to reaching out people. So, uh, certainly if you have any recommendations, I need to reach out to, uh, the Spanish Rob and see if he wants to do one. I think he'd be yeah, a good he, guest. He'd be a fun guest. He'd be yeah. fun. I mean, talk about stories. That guy's done everything, you know? I mean, yeah. he lives in New York City, and he goes to every party, every event, and he knows everybody. And uh, he's a right. good friend, and, and he's a fun guy to talk to. The only thing is you'll, you'll need a lot more than just the time here. And, uh, yeah. and the, more, the more you throw back a few drinks, the fun of the stories get. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so I've heard, I, I've heard some of those stories via the other people uh, yeah. that he shared. So maybe we'll get a few of them firsthand, but that'd be great. Um, and, um, you know, the, the other thing I can say is that, uh, aside from being able to work with cool things like watches, I mean, I could tell everybody in the world that hands down my favorite part of the watch industry is the people that we meet mm -hmm. and the friends that you make. I mean, I would say with the exception of very, you know, small handful of people, most of my friends are from the watch industry and that's, uh, yeah it's crazy because everybody is from all different walks of life. And, and if it was just because we're in the same space and we met and we didn't have watches in common, mm -hmm. likely we wouldn't have hit it off the way we hit it off. And a lot of my best friends are in the industry and uh, you know, you guys are included, man. That's it's, it's a yeah. fun space. Yep. I, I couldn't agree more. I, my quote I always say is I like the watches, but I love the people. And, yeah, exactly. Um, and, and right now that couldn't be more true. I mean, I still really enjoy, you know, putting my watch on in the morning and taking it off at night, but, um, you know, getting to talk with you, getting emails, DMs and text messages from customers around the world. Um, there's a lot of love right now, a lot of positive energy, which is exactly what we need. And, um, hopefully we get through this quickly and we can all get back to, to doing what we love, uh, out, out in the real world. And, um, I'll look forward to, uh, to seeing you at a, at a wind up or sometime in New York uh, when this is all done. Yeah. And, and maybe, um, actually, maybe maybe we'll get the guys from the Watch List channel come out to you guys for a change. Yeah, yeah. And if you guys want to, you know, we're probably going to be in this for another couple of weeks. If you guys want to uh, organize something again like this, um, let me know. We can do a Zoom meeting with, with and invite a bunch of people. I'm I'm down for whatever. That'd be great. Cool, man. Well, John, thank you so thank much you, for uh, for so tuning much. in. Yeah. Um, if you're if you're just tuning in, we'll have uh, a replay here for 24 hours. Make sure you're following Watch Gauge and Watch With Us channel. 
Um, hit up John on his DMs or in his comments if you have any questions. And uh, I will see you all tomorrow. Uh, John, thanks again. Cheers. Okay. Thank you, Justin. Say hi to Mike. We'll talk to you guys soon. I will. See you, buddy. All right. Cheers.